Hello and welcome. I'm Rambo Talabong and you're watching the latest episode of The Leader I Want, where Rappler puts the focus on issues, not personalities, platforms, and not gimmicks. Joining us today is the challenger in the battle for San Juan City, former Vice Mayor Francis Zamora. He is running on the promise of a new San Juan City. What does that mean? Let's ask him himself. Hi, sir. Welcome to the program. Hey, good afternoon, Rambo, and to everyone who's tuned in. Okay, sir. Let's go straight to the point, sir. Yes. What do you mean by creating and establishing a new San Juan City if ever you become mayor? Ang pinaglalaban namin dito, makabagong San Juan. Mm -hmm. First of all, our biggest uh, program that we are offering to our people is high-rise in-city public housing. We are going for high-rise because, one, San Juan is only 5.94 square kilometers. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how small we are. Mm -hmm. And there is no more vacant lot available to build uh, housing units. Next, whatever open space there is available is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Simply because there is a very low supply of land available. So we are pushing for high-rise mm -hmm. to maximize the footprint of the land that is still available. Mm -hmm. So we plan to build up to 22 stories mm -hmm. of uh, public housing buildings, and this is something that we've already coordinated with the National Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. uh, the general manager, June Escalada, mm -hmm. uh, and I and my father, Congressman Noni Zamora, we already met last February. Mm -hmm. In fact, the designs which we present uh, daily to our constituents during our campaigns are designs uh, done by the NHA specifically for San Juan. Mm -hmm. So these are not just promises. Uh, these are legitimate plans, which if uh, my father and I will be given a chance yeah. to lead San Juan as mayor and congressman, mm -hmm. uh, they can be implemented as early as next year. Mm -hmm. Sir, also your promise of a new San Juan kasi is also predicated on you again, you running against Janela Ejercito Estrada, who's mm -hmm. the latest scion in the Ejercito Estrada clan. Yes. They've been ruling and um, leading San Juan for around 50 years already. Yes, so that's you true. also seek to stop that leadership in San Juan City. What's the problem with their family continuing their legacy in San Juan? Well, Rambo, the Estradas have controlled San Juan for the last 50 years. Joseph Estrada became mayor August 5, 1969, mm -hmm. and uh, it's already 2019. So mm -hmm. by August 5, if uh, the Estradas will win, they would have been uh, in control of San Juan for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you're asking what is wrong with that? Basically, nothing has changed because the position has been passed on from one Estrada family member to another, mm -hmm. to the next, and then to the next, you know, from the grandfather to the father, uh, to the granddaughter, that's what they're planning. So mm -hmm. you don't see any change in the system because basically it's all coming from the same tree. Mm -hmm. You have employees who were uh, once employees of uh, then Mayor Joseph Estrada who are actually still in San Juan City Hall at this point. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. So you don't really expect anything new. In fact, even my uh, opponent, she herself is saying, walang dapat baguhin Sa San Juan, hindi raw dapat uh, baguhin ang pamamalakad. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are complaining about the services of the San Juan Medical Center. Mm -hmm. If you go there and you get confined, they will charge you for cotton, they will charge you for alcohol, they will charge you for electricity if you mm -hmm. will hook up your electric fan mm -hmm. uh, to the electric socket. There is no free medicines. Uh, for simple blood tests, you have to go out and transfer to another hospital just to get a simple blood test or diagnostics. So, mm -hmm. so there's a problem in housing, in healthcare. Housing, healthcare. Where else is the problem with the, um, the leadership of the Ejército Estradas for the last five decades? You know, we have been left behind by most other cities in Metro Manila. You look at Taguig, look at Mandaluyong, look at Quezon City. They have progressed. San Juan has uh, remained stagnant because, like what I said, the same same kind of leadership, uh, mm -hmm. same system, nothing, nothing new uh, has happened. And uh, sad to say, a lot of uh, the property yeah, uh, yeah. in San Juan are now Estrada owned. Mm -hmm. So they have focused too much on uh, self-interest rather than public service. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last 50 years, uh, they have uh, built so much 
condominiums, townhouses, uh, apartments. Uh, you don't like how stations. they're planning and scaping the city. No, they have, I, they have focused too much on acquiring their own uh, land for themselves. Properties. That they have not focused on uh, the core that they have uh, mm -hmm. been elected into, which is to serve the people. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. I believe that there's so much more you can do in a city uh, such as San Juan, which is in the geographic center of Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. Sir, your narrative of calling for a new San Juan is also being questioned by your um, rival yes. in the position. They're saying that you also worked with them. Yeah. In six, uh, for six years, you were vice mayor twice, right? Yes. With Mayor Guilla Gomez. Yes. So they're saying that you were with us. So why didn't you tell us that these are the problems and why did you contribute in the change that you want during your term as vice mayor while you were allied with the Ejercito Estradas? Remember, as vice mayor, you're only part of the legislative branch of the local government. Mm -hmm. So, if you are mayor, you can lead your city to the direction that you want. So, being vice mayor, you only have limited authority, limited powers. And remember, uh, uh, you preside over the city council. So, there are councillors who may think otherwise on uh, what they are for or against in terms of legislation terms of the direction of the city but bottom line is you cannot execute because you are not the executive That's so the deeper. power the power lies within the mayor the mayor uh, the direction there's what you call the executive legislative agenda what is the direction of the mayor where does the mayor want to take the city to mm -hmm. so that is where the city council uh, steps in, uh, steps in. Mm -hmm. but you don't have that power or authority mm -hmm. to say that oh, I want to do this in San Juan, I want to effect these changes, I want to improve the hospital because you are you're you only have a limited scope. But as really ideally co equal then Shah that there's also check and balance is that you have the mayor and you have the vice mayor and then there's the council. So parang what I'm getting from here now is Mahira Magsalita, even if you have the position of vice mayor, is it because may super majority sa council or party dynamics ba na talagang hindi welcome yung opinion nyo while you were allied with them? Noong time kasi nila, kumbaga um, <coughs> dictatorial yung pagsabi ng estrada ito, yung mga konsyal sumusunod. So, kaya nga nung 2015, no, when mm -hmm. we parted ways, I felt I I became liberated because one of the things that I wanted to do Mm -hmm. Things that I wanted to advocate for San Juan, things I could now speak against. Mm -hmm. you know, I could because, Shembre, when you were with them, mm -hmm. you know, as much as you want to do things differently, uh, it's not that easy to do. So when 2015 happened, it gave me an opportunity to give San Juan a choice. Mm -hmm. Sabi ko sa San Juan, ito yung mga plano ko, ito yung gusto kong gawin. Nasa sa inyo yan, binibigaw ko ngayon ng choice. Kasi dati, Rambo, walang choice eh. For so many years, na wala naman lumalaban talaga Walang sa estrada, opposition. sa position ng mayor, mm -hmm. di ba? And, it, uh, and 2016 was the first time that San Juan really had a choice. Na. I always say 2015 because the, the breakup happened uh, June 2015, 2015 yes. leading towards the mm -hmm. May 2016 election. What do you mean by dictatorial tendencies in managing the, pol the politics in the city? Hindi ka naman makakakontra. Kung maga, Ako, as vice mayor, there are things that I want to do. Yeah, lang, syempre, the, the direction is coming from the mayor. Mm -hmm. So we, are, we were all in one party. Mm -hmm. And pag sabihin, ito, ito dapat ang nagawin. Mm -hmm. Yung councillors, hawak din naman nila lahat, di ba? Ano yung nauna, sir? Yung binitawang kanila o sinalish mo sila? Ano yung nauna? Ganito yan. Eh, ang katotohanan yan, ganito. Ano? Si President Erap made sure na yung control nila sa San Juan would remain mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. no, between Mayor Gia Gomez and I, okay naman kami on a personal and uh, professional relationship. However, uh, the truth is President Estrada controls the family. No? Mm -hmm. If it were just uh, me and Mayor Gia, I'm sure no, things would have been okay. But in reality, syempre, si President Estrada Sabihin niya, oh, gusto niya maging mayor yung 
anak niya. Gusto niya maging mayor apo niya. Mm -hmm. Gusto niya maging mayor yung ibang membro ng pamilya niya. Bawal diba? nang tumutol yung iba. Oo, oh, eh, siyempre, siya ang patriarch. Siya ang nasusunod. Mm -hmm. So, when 2016 was coming, President Estrada made sure that all top three positions in San Juan were run by Estrada candidates. So, Congresswoman Estrada, mm -hmm. Mayor Estrada, Vice Mayor Estrada. Mm -hmm. In June 12, 2015, President Joseph Estrada called for a meeting inside the, the detention center of uh, Senator Jingoy. Yeah. And uh, in that meeting, sinabi niya, hindi dapat mawala sa Pamilya Estrada ang nasod ng San Juan. How did I know? Because in that meeting, uh, attended by, of course, President Estrada, Senator Jingoy was there because mm -hmm. that's his detention center. Mayor Guilla Gomez was there. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator JV was uh, invited, but uh, as far as I know, was not allowed to enter by mm -hmm. Senator Jingoy. The councillors were there, barangay captains were there. Nasabihan ka, sir? No, I was getting a blow-by-blow -blow account of what was happening because the barangay captains that were there were also my friends. I mean, I, I worked with them for so long. Mm -hmm. So I knew what was happening. I knew what was being said. So were you it came, it yeah. came, it, it came as a shock to me and my dad because uh, there was really a commitment naman yeah. between uh, the mayor and I. You know? Ang commitment tayo sa isa't isa, from 2010 to 2019, magkasama kami as mayor and vice mayor, magtutulungan kami. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, uh, tutulungan niya na ako maging mayor in 2019. But, you know, uh, si, si President Estrada had other things in mind. Siyempre, he has to look after the interests of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, mayor Gia... Try to intervene. Uh, well, Mayor Gia naman kasi, siya lang naman at saka si Senator JV ang family, di ba? Mm -hmm. uh, so, wala na siyang ibang iniisip. Uh -huh. Pero, look at the point of view of President Estrada or of Senator Jingoy. Hindi na talaga mababago, sir, yung kanilang point of view. No, siyempre, hindi na nabibitawan ng San Juan. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, this is their kingdom, no? so to speak. This is how they consider San Juan, their kingdom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am not a Estrada family member. I don't have any Estrada blood. Thus, for them, I have no right to become mayor of San Juan. Okay, so sir. that that is uh, exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. They the wanted to make sure that uh, Francis Zamora would never become mayor. They wanted to make sure that the Estradas would forever control mm -hmm. the position of mayor in the city of San Juan. Mm -hmm. Beyond the politics, sir, this is a platform, yo. how are you planning to actually um, pass a law or lobby a law that would institutionalize the creation of more um, housing facilities inside San Juan City? Okay, yung, yung high-rise in city public housing will be done with the National Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. So basically, what we have to do is uh, get this into the national budget of the mm -hmm. NHA. And mm -hmm. once approved, uh, if it is uh, implemented by the mm -hmm. city hall of San Juan, uh, which if I will become mayor, that will be my task, then the national budget of the NHA can be used or implemented in the city of San Juan. You're confident, sir, na magkakaroon ng budget yung, yung NHA? Because my father also, being... Uh, Candidate pa lang siya, sir. Oh, yes, but remember, he's a veteran congressman. Mm -hmm. He has uh, been elected congressman for nine terms already. Mm -hmm. He is the most senior uh, member, member of the House of Representatives. Yes. And uh, time and again, he has proven that he is able to get national funding for the city of San Juan. Okay. That is why uh, all the barangay halls in San Juan, all the public schools, all the multipurpose halls, all the basketball courts, uh, roads, drainage systems, mm -hmm. and even uh, soft projects such as educational, medical, mm -hmm. burial assistance, hospital assistance, livelihood assistance, all of these, uh, my father as congressman is able to get uh, from the national government uh, mm -hmm. for the people of San Juan. And I'm confident that if I, as mayor, and he, as congressman, will work together, mm -hmm. we will be able to get this budget uh, passed uh, mm -hmm. for the housing uh, units, high-rise in city housing mm -hmm. units of San Juan. Uh, ano naman, sir, yung sa medical center? Is that also going to be um, assisted by the national government? Or is it the budget na ng San Juan? Alam mo, Rambo, no? I'll tell you this. Yung San Juan City Hall, uh, loaned 500 million pesos for medical facilities for the rehabilitation of the San Juan Medical Center. 
but up to now, uh, if you visit it, you know, no one will ever say that they feel the 500 million pesos. Mm -hmm. So, merong pera ang local government. Kailangan lang talaga magamit siya ng maayos. Magamit ng mabuti. No? I-appropriate ng maayos. Mm -hmm. Mag-procure tayo ng tama. Na may pera. 2.5 billion pesos ang pondo ng San Juan City Hall. Yun ba yung annual budget, budget nyo last yes, year? 2.5 yes. billion. 2.5 billion. Mm -hmm. So, if you just use each and every peso of that 2.5 billion, correctly, transparently, uh, you can do a lot for San Juan. You also had a promise, sir, of making San Juan a smart city. What yes. does this mean? Okay, one, we want to give uh, free Wi-Fi to all barangays. This is very doable because San Juan is small. Uh, I will go back to what I mentioned earlier. We are only 5.94 square kilometers. Mm -hmm. And geographically, half of that is already Barangay Green Hills, which is a very developed barangay. Mm -hmm. So you only have half of San Juan uh, to really concentrate on developing. You can set up access points in all the barangays and the internet signal will come from these access points. Mm -hmm. And just like uh, major airports in other countries, public Wi-Fi. you can provide uh, free public Wi-Fi for an area such as a 5.94 square kilometer city. How is this different, sir, than the law that President Duterte lang ni President Duterte? Last year, I believe, yeah, it was actually, it's two years ago, President okay. Duterte signed a law um, mandating that Wi-Fi be placed in public spaces. How is this different in San Juan? We can incorporate uh, this national plan for Wi-Fi with our local plan mm -hmm. because we can also fund our own uh, free Wi-Fi program mm -hmm. because it, it will only take access points mm -hmm. and uh, internet uh, subscription. You can put the access points on top of your barangay halls. Mm -hmm. You can even put it in the Greenhouse ah. Shopping Center. Yeah. So, uh, if the law uh, of President Duterte is specific for public places, mm -hmm. we can now augment uh, private spaces the too. signals through private spaces. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can work closely with the DICT, mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Information and Communications Technology, once we set up uh, our own Wi-Fi. We can always coordinate with the national government for this. Mm -hmm. And we also want to set up a San Juan City application mm -hmm. wherein uh, you will register as a San Juan uh, app user. Mm -hmm. Then you will now have access to emergency response, mm -hmm. disaster response. Uh, you can actually transact uh, with the local government through your that smartphone. Yeah. You can uh, pay your taxes online. You can get assessments. You can apply for permits. Mm -hmm. We plan to have a full command center, uh, which will uh, keep uh, San Juan safe and secure 24-7. You can now call for an ambulance through your San Juan your City app. Mm -hmm. You can track uh, where your police cars are through GPS, through your San Juan City app. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if you need uh, an ambulance, uh, if uh, a fire breaks out in your home, Mabilis na tawagin. Mabilis lang, kasi San Juan is small. Mm -hmm. Alam mo, madali i-manage ang San Juan kasi maliit. You know, it, it is a nightmare to manage a city as big as uh, Quezon probably Quezon City because you're talking about uh, millions of uh, residents in a very, very huge city. geographic area. Sir, what do you niyo naman sa criticism na why are you prioritizing Wi-Fi when you can focus on housing and medical facilities? No, we're not saying that uh, Wi-Fi is the priority over housing and medical programs. We are saying all of these Sabay-sabay. Or sabay-sabay. Kaya naman namin eh. Mm -hmm. uh, Confident kayo sir na if ever you become mayor, kaya siya sabay-sabay lahat. Kaya yan. Kaya yan. Okay. Because uh, then I will be working with my father. Mm -hmm. I always say every day, no, pag ang congressman at ang mayor magkakampi, marami kang pwedeng gawin. Mas madali. Oh, right now, no, the, the, the reality is, even if my father's congressman, Politics always disrupts the services that we want to give to our people. Mm -hmm. Imagine this. My father was able to get 35 million pesos from the national government for a four-story barangay hall uh, okay. with the wooden covered basketball court in Barangay Pedro Cruz. Mm -hmm. The barangay captain turned it down. Mm -hmm. 25 million pesos for a four-story barangay hall in Barangay Metunas. The barangay Hindi captain turned it down. Simply because kakampi ng Barangay Captain sa to, yung incumbent Hinamangan mayor. Hinamangan ng party eh, eh, na... Hinaharang talaga. 
meron school in Barangay Waskrame, which was uh, inaugurated December 8, 2015. Mm -hmm. It's been three years and four months, hindi pa rin nabubuksan. Yeah. Yan, ang, yan ang katotohanan na napupulitika. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, if I and my dad will serve San Juan together, mawawala yung politika yan. We will now be able to implement uh, our plans. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, this will be my father's last three years as congressman. Yeah. He's now 74. Mm -hmm. If he wins, uh, he will finish his last term at 77 years old. Mm -hmm. All he is thinking now is to leave a legacy in San Juan. He wants to finish all these programs, the high rise in city so public housing, yung uh, improvement ng ating San Juan Medical Center. Mm -hmm. Kailangan natin kumpletuhin yung mga gamit. Eh. Masyado nag-focus yung current administration sa structure. Pero yung nasa loob ng structure, ang kulang. Okay. Yung equipment, yung Personal. apparatus, mm -hmm. yung services, training. Yeah. Okay, so free medicine, doctors, nurses. Yeah. So they, they focus too much on the exterior, but Hindi not, not uh, in the actual uh, implementation important uh, factors of equipment, training, implementation, execution. Okay, so sir. I'm really excited to be given the chance to work with my dad because you know, I, I have seen him. I have seen him serve San Juan and, and staff uh, office, yeah, during his 2004 time. 2004 to 2007 mm -hmm. and 2016 up to present. So I, I implement uh, all the educational assistance, medical assistance, birth assistance, scholarship programs. I I am on top of all the infrastructure projects. So kabisado uh, na namin So parang dream team for you working with definitely, your dad definitely definitely okay. because I want I want to show San Juan na ang dami pang pwedeng gawin maganda. Kung baga, for the last 50 years, iniisip ng San Juan, ito na yung maganda. Hanggang dito na lang ang pwedeng iganda. And Gusto namin ipakita Rambo, mas malaki pang igaganda natin. Yeah. And when your dad retires, sir, do you think the efforts to Estrada clan also has another candidate in store to replace your dad? Well, that's, uh, that's already looking uh, beyond. Uh. Mm -hmm. But ako, I, I just want to focus on these three years. Are you? Uh, your, your party? Well, we, we definitely need to have a candidate for congressman in 2022. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, we're not uh, looking that far away. Not yet. We just want to make sure that the next three years in San Juan, we will be able to implement all our plans and programs. Mm -hmm. Everything that we are promising now, we will make sure we will be able to deliver all of them. Okay, sir. And uh, with those grand, grand promises locally, sir, you're also running under PDP Laban, the ruling party of the yeah. president. Yes. And with that, you also have, uh, you also carry the promises of the president with you. Mm -hmm. And one of his biggest promises is the anti-drug campaign, mm -hmm. ending the illegal drug problem before he steps down. That's his yes. newest deadline, actually, from six months to before he steps down. Mm -hmm. If you become mayor, what is your plan to end illegal drugs in San Juan City? Well, the program versus illegal drugs is really the core program of the president. Now, in San Juan, just, just, just mm -hmm. two nights ago, mm -hmm. can you imagine this? the head counselor of the current vice mayor who is the head of the city anti-drug abuse council mm -hmm. the head counselor of the city anti-drug abuse council was high on drugs how do you know that killed his brother, killed his brother. Mm -hmm. and killed our leader mm -hmm. in barangay little bagyo he went on a rampage it was all over the news yeah just yesterday and this is the head anti-drug abuse counselor he is part of the team of the current vice mayor mm -hmm. in the city anti-drug abuse council so you know that something is wrong when your head counselor ends up killing his own brother, brother. and killing another resident of barangay little baguio mm -hmm. while he was high on drugs so definitely we really have to review the local program uh, being implemented now by the current vice mayor. What's the state of the drug problem in San Juan City? San Pinakamalala, sir? So you mentioned the Merong case uh, local government. Me, but like, rin, in general, how uh, is it? You know, uh, two or three years ago, nagkaroon ng raid ng Shabu, Shabu. Lab sa Barangay Little Baguio again. Mm -hmm. And uh, more than two or three billion was uh, seized during that raid. So, talagang malaki ang problema sa drugs. So, if I win, I will really be hands-on in the fight against drugs. Uh, I have been an advocate of, uh, 
of a healthy lifestyle. I'm also an athlete, mm -hmm. so part of uh, my lifestyle is really maintaining uh, a healthy body, mm -hmm. positive outlook. And uh, one thing that I can be proud of is I never took drugs in my life. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, as an example, will really uh, show the people of San Juan that we will have a hands-on campaign mm -hmm. against uh, illegal drugs and we will also promote uh, a healthy lifestyle among our constituents. Would you have any proposed policies for the police or for rehabilitation agencies if ever you become mayor? We will, we will allocate more funding for anti-drugs. Mm -hmm. yeah, anti-drug campaigns, these will need a lot of funding mm -hmm. because you are up against uh, syndicates that have uh, billions of pesos uh -huh. just to maintain uh, their drug business. Mm -hmm. So this is a very serious and complex problem, mm -hmm. which is not just uh, in San Juan, but this is nationwide. No? Okay, sir. So a lot of promises coming from you, sir. And one of the biggest criticism from your rival again, Janela Herosito Estrada, is yeah. your programs, these promises that you're giving appears to be exclusionary because meron daw Zamora card na kailangan <laughs> bago ma-access yung services that you're promising and actually are already being offered. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? No, the Zamora ID system basically is ensuring that the funds that the Office of the Congressman is disbursing are all going to legitimate San Juan residents. No? Mm -hmm. Kasi hindi, hindi naman unlimited yung pondo. Mm -hmm. diba? So we want to make sure Nataka San Juan ang makakakuha. So how do we how do we do that? We also check uh, who you are, where you live. How do you do that? Or what's the process of getting a Zamora ID? Yeah, they can they can and apply they can apply for the ID. They they just have to go to our office and apply. Once we determine that they are bona fide San Juan residents, they can get the card. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been running the Congressional District Office the last three years. Prior to that, uh, in 2004 up to 2007, I also handled the same office. What do we encounter? People going to our office saying they are residents of San Juan. They will ask for help because they have a 200,000 peso bill in the heart center. Mm -hmm. And then upon verification, you realize they are from Pampanga. Right now, sir, your program is mm -hmm. under the office of your dad, Congressional. Yes. Yeah, these, are, these are, remember, I, I'm just a private citizen now, so I don't have any access to local government funds. Mm -hmm. I handle the Congressional District Office. Tapos if ever you become mayor, magiging na siyang local government project. Which one? The Zamora ID? Zamora ID. No, Kailangan. Th th no, no. This is our tracking system. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our way of finding out. Yung pondong nakuha ni Congressman Zamora, kanino siya napunta? Mm -hmm. Magkano? Talaga bang taga San Juan ang nakinabang? Kasi pag, uh -huh. pag hindi taga San Juan makinabang, ang nawawalan yung taga San Juan. Kung diba? naging mayor ka, sir, itatanspose ba yan to local government na even your um, projects kailangan ng no, we, track we, we can no, we, can, we can incorporate that into the governance system mm -hmm. because hindi naman unlimited yung pondo eh. mm -hmm. gusto natin ang makinabang sa pondo liti mong taga San Juan and how will you know well one your comelic uh, your comelic uh, data mm -hmm. will determine you're really from San Juan kasi meron uh, taga San Juan daw sila yung bala pinsan lang niya yung taga San Juan mm -hmm. pero taga probinsya siya Mm -hmm. Inunahan niya pa yung totoong taga San Juan dun sa pondong dapat na taga San Juan. And itong Zamora ID, sir, how will you ensure na hindi siya magiging politicized? Kasi, sir, nandun yung pangalan nyo. Well, they can, they can always uh, just apply for this. Wala namang, wala namang kami tinatang yan. Mm -hmm. Pwede naman mag-apply. Kaya lang, naturally, yung mga pro-estrada, di ba, uh, kung ang loyalty nila ay sa estrada, you know, mm -hmm. yung iba, hindi na pumupunta sa opisina namin. Pero meron pa rin pumupuntang mga Estrada supporters because pag pumunta naman silang San Juan City Hall, hindi naman sila natutulungan. So they end up going to us. They ask if they want to apply for an ID, we give them. So Zamora ID is open for everyone, regardless of the political party, political yes. association. In fact, a lot of uh, Zamora ID holders are actual Estrada supporters. Uh, mm -hmm. But because we are open, uh, our office is open for anyone who needs help. Basta lang, ang kailangan namin malaman, liti mo ka bang taga San Juan? Okay, sir. With your policies already discussed, I wanted to delve into an, a what if in your candidacy and your political ambition, actually. <laughs> you backed a recall petition yes. last year, last, last year as well. Um, what happened to that? Kasi, di ba, it was heard by the COMELEC yes. na pwedeng 
may possibility na magkaroon ng recall election against yes. Mayor Guia Gomez. Yes. Pero na cancel siya kasi it's already past one year before elections and <coughs> yeah, we're actually close to elections already. Yes. Bakit na hold up yung process? Well, you know, it, it is very, very difficult to have recall election. Why? Because mm -hmm. under the law, you cannot have recall elections one year before mm -hmm. the next regular elections. Mm -hmm. And you also cannot file a recall petition uh, mm -hmm. on the first year of the term of the incumbent official that you are recalling. Mm -hmm. So you only have that Snow second window. year mm -hmm. in between to have uh, a recall election. What delayed it the most? The well, process? alam mo, it's so clear na talagang lahat ng pwede na lang gawin i-delay, ginawa nila. The tactic really was to make sure hindi siya umabot on time. Mm -hmm. The COMELEC approved the recall petition. That means, based on legal merit, panalo kami. Kaya lang, simple resolutions to be signed, to be transmitted, you know, took months and months. And I, I, will, I will be very, very candid in saying that the election officer then of San Juan really did his very best to delay it. Kasi isipin mo, yung notice para umabot yung... Um, information. Yung okay. recall, yeah. yung the actual notice para umabot uh, kay Mayor Gia, yeah. mm -hmm. it took almost two months para umabot, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, doon pa lang two months na yung nawala sa'yo, just for uh, the mayor to receive it. Okay. So, each and every step of the way, dinalay nila lang dinalay. No? Mm -hmm. But, the COMELEC voted for it. In fact, it was approved. When the verification process was about to start, COMELEC then says, wala raw budget yung verification. Mm -hmm. So, yung pinagdaanan namin napakatagal, kung kailan na-approve siya ng COMELEC, COMELEC din na magsasabi na, wala rin din silang pondo para bilangin yung 30,000 signatures. 30, signatures yeah. But, you know, we, we have to face the reality na hindi rin naman kasi sila basta-basta papayag na magkaroon yeah. ng recall election. So, they really had to do uh, their best uh, to slow down the process. I mean, if, we, if the ele elections uh, had pushed through, we would have been the only city in the entire country having A recall election. having recall uh, elections on that day. Diba? So, ibang-iba siya sa 2016 scenario na sabay-sabay, yun ang nangyari. That means, mas matututukan ng lahat yung election sa San Juan kung natuloy siya. Mm -hmm. And now you're getting your chance actually to run again. Yes. There has yes. not a clan with a regular election. That's true. But, you know, mm -hmm. even Rambo, if, even if the yeah. recall did not push for through, sure. the fact that the COMELEC voted for it, mm -hmm. the fact that the TRO filed by uh, Mayor Gia was denied by the Supreme Court, that is a moral victory for us. Mm -hmm. That is a moral victory for the 30,000 San Juanenos that signed the recall petition. Mm -hmm. And we carry that moral victory with us now. Mm -hmm. And that is why there is a momentum yeah. on our side entering the May 13, election. 2019 in elections. In a few weeks. So in you're 17 days. Yes. 17 and, days to go. Yeah. And you're counting on this momentum to win how sure are you or how confident are you that you can stand up against the machinery, the time-tested machinery and name of the Ejercito Estrada plan? No, I'm very, very optimistic. I'm very optimistic that this time we will win this. I, I see it, I feel it. Yeah, if I had lost by five or 10,000 votes or 15,000 votes in 2016, I would tell myself, okay, San Juan wants the status quo. Wow. But remember, I only lost by 1,000 votes. I lost by a thousand votes against an incumbent mayor whose uh, son was an incumbent senator, whose husband was a former president of the Philippines and an incumbent mayor of Manila, who had a running mate whose father is a former senator. Mm -hmm. They had the full control of uh, City Hall, funds, manpower, San Juan Police, Comlex San Juan, you know, yeah. all the advantages that you could ever think of. Mm -hmm. They so, were all on their side. And yet, I only lost by a thousand votes. So this tells me that San Juan is indeed ready for change. Mm -hmm. But my challenge is how to better prepare, how mm -hmm. to execute better, how not to be cheated this time. Okay. So th the last three years have uh, prepared me. I, I can honestly tell you that uh, 2016 was a very, very painful experience. 
And uh, the last three years, uh, I have focused on making sure that when the second chance comes, it won't get away. I will be more prepared. Experience has taught me okay. uh, a very hard lesson. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for that insight and your, you sharing your platform with us here at Rappler right now. That has been mayoral candidate Francis Zamora running for the mayor, mayoralty of San Juan City. This has been the leader I want of Rappler. I'm Ramo Talabo. Thank you for watching.